Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be talking about why I left Adobe Premiere Pro and the five reasons why I chose DaVinci Resolve 14. So let's get into it. What is up guys? So I am finally in my new office and I got a lot of videos coming to you guys soon. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna post a bunch of behind the scenes stuff and you know, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that kind of stuff. So after being an Adobe Premiere Pro user since CS 5.5 and being a Creative Cloud member since 2013, I have finally canceled my Adobe Premiere Pro subscription. Now, actually, I didn't totally cancel it yet. I am changing just to the photography plan because I do a lot of photography. And I do think that Photoshop and Lightroom are pretty much unmatched and they work pretty well for me. So it's really nothing I can kill to complain about. Since about 2016, I've had consistent problems with crashing, media issues, playback, just countless errors that have gotten worse and worse over time. And that's the biggest disappointment. For something that you pay for monthly, you would expect that each month the software would get better and better and better. But unfortunately, that has not been the case with Adobe Premiere Pro at all. Actually, Philip Bloom posted like a big like sort of note to Adobe recently about his problems with Adobe Premiere Pro. And it sounds very similar to what myself and many others have been doing. So the tipping point for me was I was actually traveling recently and I was in a hotel room and I started to edit something and this happened. So this is editing a video, and this is actually editing off the internal SSD, and these are GH5 4K clips. Now watch this, I scroll down to something that hasn't been, hasn't shown up just yet. It's frozen on an old clip. Media pending. Now, mind you, this is off an SSD. This is a maxed out MacBook Pro. It took probably six seconds just to load that clip. And that's when I knew that I had to leave Adobe Premiere Pro. It is so unoptimized that I can't do my job. So it was kind of scary jumping back into the, you know, deciding what editor to choose. I mean, I haven't decided what editor to choose since probably like 2010. So I looked at everything from Sony Vegas to HitFilm Pro to Avid Media Composer to Final Cut Pro. And although all of these softwares are amazing in their own aspects, and I think they're great, I had to choose DaVinci Resolve 14 just because of the way that I work in my workflow. All right, so let's jump into the five reasons why I chose DaVinci Resolve 14. Reason number one, and one of the biggest, is optimization. DaVinci Resolve 14's optimization is incredible. I don't know what Blackmagic is doing with their rendering software, but it's amazing. Everything from media playback in the timeline to rendering, it is just so much faster. One of the things that I hated doing in Premiere Pro was making proxies. It took forever to render 4K proxies, especially to even like a, you know, a GoPro Cineform or something like that. It just took so long. And it was almost to the point where I was transcoding, where it's like, I might as well just transcode at this point. So I just did a music video recently where I shot in 4K and I actually created optimized media for all the clips. And it took roughly 10 minutes to do all of it, which is pretty insane to me. Actually, a few months back, I did a quick little, like, you know, not very scientific test, but I put DaVinci Resolve 14 and Premiere Pro against each other in a render test. Premiere Pro rendered it in 17 minutes and DaVinci Resolve rendered it in under a minute. So, I mean, that just kind of goes to show you that there's obviously a massive difference in optimization. On to number two, and that is render times. So although it's kind of with optimization, the render times are so insanely fast that I couldn't help but make it a whole nother point itself. I've seen a few tests online where DaVinci Resolve has actually beaten out Final Cut Pro on the MacBook Pros, which is pretty insane considering that Final Cut on the MacBook Pros is incredible in its optimization. I used to be a person that never thought that render times really mattered. It was always like, ah, you know, I'll render it overnight. But there's been so many times now with Adobe Premiere Pro where I've had tight deadlines and I can't even render it in the amount of time that I need to get it, render it, and then upload it to whoever I'm delivering it to. All right, jumping on to number three is color grading. I mean, this was kind of obvious, but it was one of those things that, you know, it's just DaVinci Resolve does it the best. If you don't read American Cinematographer magazine, you definitely should. I highly recommend it. It's a great magazine. But if you open up that magazine, every single film that you will ever see in that magazine uses DaVinci Resolve 14 for color grading. I have not seen once, I mean, somebody can point one out if they've seen it, but I have not seen once anyone use another color grading software other than DaVinci Resolve. I love the Node workflow and everything just seems better. One of the biggest things that I really didn't like about Adobe Premiere Pro's Lumetri panel, although it was very convenient and worked for a lot of stuff you did, one of the biggest issues that I had is I felt like when you did color workflows, when you were white balance, selecting, or changing 
the color tonality of any type of image, I always felt like you were painting with colors. That's the best way to explain it. When I would put blues in the shadows, it always just felt like I was slapping blue and dropping the opacity over the entire image. Where in DaVinci Resolve 14, I feel like when I move the shadows over to the blue, it's actually moving the shadows towards the blue. And that was one of my biggest gripes about Premiere Pro, is although the Lumetri color panel was so convenient, it wasn't good enough. And DaVinci Resolve just nails it on every level. The raw color workflow, everything top to bottom is amazing. And I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, on to number four is Fairlight. So if you don't know Fairlight, it's actually a high-end audio finishing program that previously was used on Hollywood features, but it was something that was a standalone product. You couldn't really have it in any software. But the fact that DaVinci Resolve 14 has it built in, now let's talk about built-in, because although Adobe Premiere Pro has a great dynamic link between Audition, the reality is you still have to open up Audition, it has to send it out, send it back, and of course you're in a whole new program that looks completely different and it's technically still a second program. The fact that Fairlight is literally built into DaVinci Resolve, that you literally just have to click on the Fairlight tab and it opens all of your audio up, and you have a full audio finishing program, that's incredible. One of the things that I really love too is the support for VSTs. Now I know Adobe Premiere Pro had a little bit of support for some plugins and stuff like that, but the fact that you can go ahead and purchase or get for free any type of VST plugins, whether it's EQ, noise reduction, there's some incredible software out there that you can easily now have right in your editing software that you could never have before. I found Fairlight very easy to work with. It's just very simple. And I just love the UI of the entire software, but especially Fairlight. And the fifth and final reason, obviously, is price. The fact that DaVinci Resolve is free. You can literally go download DaVinci Resolve right now for $0. I mean, this is an amazing piece of software. I would argue one of the best pieces of software out there when it comes to editing and obviously color grading and the fact that it's 100% free. Now, of course, like I said, there is a studio version that is $300, but the reality is that the difference to the studio version is very slim. Unless you need things like special noise reduction, uh, 3D stereoscopic workflows, or possibly some codec support. Now, that's one thing I kind of ran into at first. Now, of course, the GH5, which I'm shooting on right now, shoots 10-bit H.264. Unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve 14 does not support H.264 10-bit in 4K, but what I do is I just convert to ProRes for videos like this, and honestly, in most cases, I can just easily shoot 8-bit. So of course, you could just convert to ProRes, or you can just use 8-bit in camera, but ProRes, DNX HD, pretty much all other codecs are completely supported in the free version, including Red Code RAW, which is sweet. So I have been using DaVinci Resolve 14 for about a month and a half now, and I do absolutely love it. Now, of course, there are a couple things that are a little bit different from Premiere Pro that I have to get used to. Of course, the After Effects, there's Fusion 9, which is a little bit more difficult, um, but I think has simpler node base working in, in the end, so it kind of works out. The only thing that I found difficult on DaVinci Resolve 14 is the multicam workflows. I think it's a bug, and for some reason, the multicam workflows isn't working for me, so I've had to do things a little bit more manual, but it's kind of fun because it's made me think outside the box and I've gotten a little bit lazy in my multicam workflows. I've just synced things, I just sit there and click back and forth. Now granted, do I want to do that forever? No. So guys, to wrap things up, I cannot recommend DaVinci Resolve 14 enough, especially if you are paying for Adobe Premiere Pro monthly or you're paying for you know whatever other software it may be. Um, I really can't recommend DaVinci Resolve 14 enough. It has been an amazing piece of software and I can't wait for more updates in the future. And I know that Blackmagic Design is, you know, they're very good about their customer service. I think they're just gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing the envelope. And I mean, hopefully, I think one day, you know, you never know, maybe Adobe will come around and they'll fix some stuff. But I think until then, I think DaVinci Resolve 14 is, is the real king of video editing. So thank you guys for sticking along for the ride for this video. I hope this was informative to you and I hope you guys, you know, make some cool decisions based on it. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram down below. I post tons of behind the scenes photos. I've really been putting a lot of effort on my Instagram, so definitely go check that out. Please like and subscribe. Um, we got a lot of cool content coming, especially my new office here. I might do a desk tour, um, as well as some reviews of some of the products that I have. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys soon.